Suki. What? Suki. 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 The RH35. Yeah. This is an HDI monitor, but it's also a video recorder. And you may be wondering why I have VHS cameras next to me. This is gonna be a fun one. Let's dive into it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school, but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. For all you longtime viewers, you know, I've done various videos over the years on VHS cameras. <laughs> I just think it's really fun to incorporate them in modern day. And so in this video, I wanna combine some modern technology with some older, old technology. In addition to that, I'll be able to take a broken VHS camcorder, this thing doesn't record to tape anymore, and be able to record digitally. Now, since I have this YouTube channel, I get contacted fairly frequently uh, for product reviews and most of them I kind of just ignore. They're just not relevant to what I'm doing or overlap with interests of mine. But this company reached out to me and wanted me to review their external field monitor slash recorder. It sparked some interest because I had this idea for a couple of years now to do a video on taking a broken VHS camera and being able to still record with modern technology. And this will do just that. This is really focused more towards filmmakers and whatnot. There's not too many of them on the market that are justifiable in price to purchase for this type of video. So I was very excited to receive this. So this isn't really sponsored. I'm not being paid in any way. My thoughts are my own, but this product was sent to me, you know, to make a video. And this won't be a direct review of the product. Ooh. It'll just be a video showing some ideas and things that maybe can help you on your creative journey for your videos or you know for whatever you want to do. This thing, the battery for it doesn't work. I have to plug it into the wall. My ace in the hole, my holy grail, my secret weapon to be able to make these work and be able to walk around and vlog. Yes, I did do a video vlogging with these back in the day. Um, it broke. And that is the Omni Charge. This is a, whoa was a really amazing piece of tech. I loved it. It's a it's a power bank. But why is it so good? Because it has 120 outlet on there. You can plug your cameras, your laptops, whatever you want in there and charge it, but it will also power cameras. And it stopped working. It won't charge anymore. Ugh, I'm very sad. I use it all the time for that stuff. So I'm in charge if you're watching, hit me up. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So this doesn't work, so I can't go out and vlog at the moment. Uh, in the field, so I'll have to record some stuff around the studio. So this, which I can't pronounce, it comes in a plastic case that's kind of cheap feeling, fairly small. Uh, so it wouldn't really work too great if you're a filmmaker. It works great for what I'm about to show you. But with this, I can put this on the cold shoe, and now I have a monitor to live view what's coming out of this camera. But how? How does that work? It uses HDMI. How the heck are you gonna get this into the camera? What? I got you covered. But before that, it comes with some extra stuff. It comes with a short HDMI cable. It comes with a, a USB to DC power. It comes with a lens cloth, and it comes with an Allen wrench to tighten up this, which I think I need to do. This is kind of loose. And it comes with a micro SD card. Uh, I think it's in over in my computer. So I think it's like eight gigabytes or something like that. And that is it. It's powered either through the uh, DCN or you can run your in, like your Sony NPF batteries. I love these things. These ones are, uh, I'll leave links in the description. This is a Vemco. I love this, but these batteries come in smaller sizes too. I got, I guess got these bigger ones because they last a lot longer. But what's cool about it is it has a check on the top so you can view how much battery is left in, in these things. And it has its own extra USB out. I can have this plugged into the unit itself and then I can power something else, which comes in handy for this thing I'll talk about in just a second. But this has an in and an out HDMI. So you can technically use this as a pass through live view monitor and still run through into something else and just use this for recording because it also records. It records up to 1080 60 though. It won't do anything higher than that. And it's much smaller uh, and compact, so that's a plus and a minus depending on your use case. But for this case, it is perfect. In theory, there would be an external battery source to it, but 
for the studio case, I'll have to run it into a wall. I have a fix for that later, but that's another video. And I can look through like you would a regular digital camera and be able to record the signal that's coming into this unit because the tape on here does not work. I think that's fun, it's weird and cool. But how do you do that? How do I connect it into this unit itself? How do I get HDMI into a VHS camcorder? How does that work? What's this witchcraft? I'll show you. This is an upscaler. Uh, this does one weird extra step you'll have to do in editing to fix, but we'll get into that in a minute. So this has RCA cables on one side, which are the in, and then it has an HDMI port on the other side, and that goes out. And then on the side, it has two options. You can go 720p or 1080p. Yeah, this will can turn your, your VHS tapes all the way up to 1080p. But here is one little caveat with this particular device. It does convert if you will, a four by three into 16 by nine. What that means is it just stretches it to fill 16 nine. So in post, you just have to de-stretch it back to its native format. It's really, really simple. It is just annoying though. It's just one extra step that I would rather not have to do, but there are devices out on the market that can do that, but I don't think they come in a small package like this. I think it's a, like a bigger unit. I could be wrong. If I am, please let me know in the comments below because I would love to get my hands on one of those and try it out. Now this though, unfortunately does need power. Yeah, that's where this extra USB port on the, the uh, that battery comes in handy. It's just a uh, USB plugs in and then you can plug this into the battery and then this is where things get a little tricky. Mounting it. I would just stick some like Velcro or something and mount it to the unit itself. And then this cable, this is the RCA for the camera, plugs into the camera and plugs into the device. And now the signal from this is now going into the monitor. Yeah, how cool is that? And you can record just by pressing the button on the monitor itself. I think it's fun. Is it practical? Absolutely not. But is it cool? I mean, you tell me, is it? <laughs> I think it's cool. <laughs> I think it's fun. Links to everything that I just described to you, except for the cameras, because you know, those are old. <laughs> I'll leave in the description below. That's a little better. All right, so I am using solely the VHS camera for the audio and the video, obviously, but the video is digital. This is a digital recording of this masterpiece stretched out. So I'm going to de-stretch it back into its native 4-3 ratio. Here we go. This is what it looks like. It looks crooked. I think the shot's just really crooked because I have this balanced on something. Here. Balanced on its case and that stool. <laughs> I forgot to grab a tripod for it. So yeah, I messed up. Okay. It moved. Oh. It has autofocus on it. It's pretty bad when a VHS camcorder has better autofocus than the Panasonic GH5. If you know, you know. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. So now I'm going to take you into the editing room and I'm going to show you how to do a quick, I mean, it's super fast, de squeeze, de stretch. Not, not, no, de, de stretched. De stretched. Method on how to do it inside uh, Adobe Premiere Pro because that is the editor I use. So let's head on in there. Hey, future Chris here. <laughs> uh, the video is done. I exported it and uploaded it even to YouTube. Uh, however, I found something out about this monitor at the last minute that kind of makes the editing process irrelevant to convert it back to 4.3. I am going to leave it in this video because I think it'd be kind of cool to leave some extra editing tips. Maybe you can learn something from it, but it's kind of irrelevant now to this particular thing because I just learned it. Check it out. So as I said, this guy stretches out your footage. It is an upscaler. I've used it on multiple different things and I've always had to go in and you know de-stretch it. However, uh, going into this monitor, I found a very, very helpful setting to eliminate that. So in the menu section and you go to video configuration and you go down to aspect, you can actually set it to 4.3 and it de-stretches it. Look at that. That's a natural 4.3. How cool is that? So yeah, I wish I had learned that a little bit sooner, um, but I am gonna leave, like I said, that editing little tutorial in there because I still think there's some value there that maybe you can learn some editing tips and tricks for something else in the future. But anyway, back to your regular scheduled programming. 
All right, so now we're in Premiere Pro. This is just the software I use, but I'm gonna show you two different ways to go about doing this. And one of the ways is pretty basic, pretty simple, and there's one that's a little bit more precise, but uh, let me know in the comments if you know a better way. <laughs> but let's get into it. So all I've done is I made a sequence and I dropped the clip in here, and as you can see, it's um, 16 by nine. It's a little stretched out. Look at me, I'm fat, but I ain't that fat. <laughs> So the simplest way to go about it is if you don't want to be too precise, if you're still utilizing this aspect ratio with inside another like 16 by 9 video, such as the video I'm doing today, then do it this way. It's fast, it's quick and dirty and simple. All you're going to do is, is you're going to click uh, the clip and go up to the effects control panel and where it says scale, position, all that stuff, what you're going to do is uncheck uniform scale. Come over to scale height and scale width, ignore the height, and just mess with the width until it kind of looks right. You know, it doesn't have to be crazy precise like that, boom. Looks pretty good. It's not a true 4.3, but eh, does the job. Now, I'm gonna show you a way more precise way of doing it. We go up to sequence, sequence settings, and this may look intimidating, Please ignore a lot of this stuff. All you're gonna to need to be doing is paying attention to frame size. Right now it's 1920 by 1080, vertical 16.9 ratio. We want that to be 4.3. 4.3 isn't tied to any sort of resolution as far as 1080, 720, SD, 4K, Ultra HD. It doesn't reflect that whatsoever. You can still have a 4K image in a 4.3 ratio. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna upscale this to 4K because that's what I'm recording this video in. You might as well. Type in 2880 by 2160 and now we have a 4.3 4K image. That's it, all you have to do is press OK, ignore everything else. And now you're gonna see it doesn't quite match because one, it's not upscaled yet, it's still in 1080. So I'm gonna go over to scale and I'm gonna scale it up to fit, which is actually gonna be quick hand is 200 on the scale. And now it's a true four by three image, but you're gonna say, well, Chris, it's chopped off. What about the sides? And you'd be absolutely correct. And plus the image is still stretched out. So you just do the same thing as before. You uncheck the uniform scale, and this is where you just adjust the picture till it fits the frame. And you can use your arrow key to be more precise. Up and down, stretches it and de-stretches it. So right there, look at that, boom. Now you have a perfectly scaled 4-3 ratio image, and it's in 4K. It's not too difficult. Bonus tip time. Let's say you have multiple different clips that you're trying to do this to, and you don't wanna to have to do that to every single one. So I'm gonna show you something super easy and makes editing this type of stuff super fast. And I have three extra clips here that I need to make sure that they're the same as this one. So you have to do all those steps as like I just showed you. Here is a quick, fast way to copy that over to those three clips. Right click the clip that has the effects already done and you're gonna go up to copy. Now, highlight the three clips that you want to copy that to, right click it, and then come up to paste attributes. And then you get this window, and this is just a window of stuff that you have the opportunity to not carry over or just carry over. So let's say you didn't want to adjust the volume on those clips, you wanted to keep it the same, you would just uncheck it if it was checked. Hopefully that makes sense. And just hit OK. And now when you go over those clips, everything transferred over. Super fast, super amazing. Now there is one other thing in the footage that actually kind of cleans it up a bit. You do miss out on that tracking and that VHS quality in a sense. Um, you still get you know a really good crappy image because that's really what you're going for, right? You want that that style, that aesthetic of VHS, and you do get that with this uh, setup. Um, but you don't get the tracking issues or the you know those random little glitches that go through the, or the ribbon of, you know in, in the image because you are eliminating that tape. Um, so there is that and it saves so much time in post-processing even with the having to de-stretch it out. You don't have to capture the footage because if you had recorded it to tape and you walked around and you shot an hour of footage, you would have to capture that into your computer and it would take an hour to transfer. So there's that. This is just on an SD card. You pop it in, you're good to go. It's already done. Other type of recorders that I've found or that I'm uh, familiar with, um, they'll run you a lot of money, like a lot of money. They're very expensive, but they're 
specifically it's supposed to be used for cinema cameras and things and so you get high quality features on those. This is a much smaller, slimmed down, dumbed down, if you will, cheaper alternative to those. And it's perfect for doing kind of like these fun little side projects with older tech and making them work again. This is perfect size too for walking around. I wouldn't want it something gigantic on this thing. So if you do pick one of these up and expecting to get those crazy high quality things, well, don't, but it doesn't mean this thing isn't good. It, has some great features and it's simple and it's compact. I really, really actually like this thing. This is gonna solve a lot of issues for other videos in the future. What do you guys think? You gonna get one of these? Let me know in the comments below. Let's chat. If you're into VHS or just older tech being used in modern days, if you're into that, consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.